Storm and Desire became a pop culture phenomenon by presenting the association's history as an epic adventure, rewarding you in the process with a broad understanding of how history had unfolded since nearly the dawn of time. The association did not present a unified news source, and its historians were not publishing for the general public. Most people didn't care. You had enough on your plate, just keeping track of your own local feeds, maybe monitoring a few floors in your region of the building, and then maybe some super top-level parliamentary stuff every now and again. The everyday diplomacy conducted by the association was largely invisible to you. You trusted the association was keeping you safe from the most dangerous horrors of reality, and you didn't actually need or want a granular feed of which specific horrors were on the docket each day. Inside the building, these horrors might emerge any time elevator doors opened on an undocumented floor. In the early days, undocumented floors under the association's border were frequently explored in an almost cavalier fashion. Then, one exploration team opened an elevator into a pocket dimension that had been totally consumed by a vast evil consciousness— which quickly escaped into the building at large and subsumed the lives of over 30 billion people across approximately 425 floors before security found a way to poison it. Since then, the association operated under a strict policy of non-intervention. No admittance was allowed to undocumented floors. If the inhabitants of an undocumented floor found their way into the building at large, any effort to contain them was fair game until diplomacy was possible. The association had only managed to properly document around 4,000 floors of the 50,000 it theoretically policed when the policy of non-intervention was implemented. So new horrors were always a potential threat. Outside the building, fleet patrolled for similar horrors that might emerge out of the vast multiverse— you might consider that an absolutely futile and thankless task, but Fleet Admiral Alan Slab was himself a considerable menace. Beacons around the exterior of the building welcomed travelers, but they had to get past Admiral Slab's fleet first, and many failed that task. And when a force too powerful to hold off made its way to the building, Admiral Slab was a potent negotiator— when a planetary hive mind calling itself Engine of Creation responded to the beacons, bringing 30 entire worlds in tow that it had captured and absorbed into the hive, Admiral Slab only needed to annihilate one of the enslaved worlds and all its inhabitants before reaching a truce. 